Hi everybody, I'm Mark Lowry. And in 1984, I wrote a lyric called Mary Did You Know. And in 1991, Buddy Green put music to it. Now, we all know that. I mean, if you're on my Facebook page, you know this. Well, I've been reading on the internet that a lot of people don't like Mary Did You Know because of different questions that I asked. And what they're failing to realize is the questions are rhetorical. You know, I don't know what Mary knew other than what the angel told her. And so I asked in 1984, I was young, and maybe the questions weren't as theologically profound as some might think. Or th and one guy I just read, it, it was a very kind article uh, he's, he wondered if I believed in the Immaculate Conception. Well, I don't know how you could ask that question. I do. With all my heart, I believe Jesus was born of a virgin. And uh, I believe Mary was that virgin. She was the young virgin girl that Isaiah prophesied about that would come and bear us a Savior. And so I hope you'll look at it as rhetorical questions, study a little English and learn what a rhetorical question is. And that will help you see that I, I, I wasn't asking her, did you? Well, I really was. I don't know that she knew he was God. I knew, I know she knew he was the Messiah. Um, and also God is with us. Emmanuel means God is with us. So maybe she got it from that. I don't, I don't know. I, but they are rhetorical questions. I do believe he was born of a virgin. I do not believe she knew he would walk on water. Of course she didn't because he hadn't done it yet. Or he would be crucified. He, the angel did not tell her that. Said a sword would pierce your heart, I believe. In other words, there's going to be pain involved, Mary. But I'm so thankful the Lord didn't tell us everything up front. That he saves the real tough stuff for the journey. Because we're all on a journey, right? And Mary was on a journey. And Joseph was on a journey. All our lives are journeys. And thankfully, when the Lord calls us and woos us to himself, he doesn't let us know everything that's down the road. But listen, everything that's down the road is still down the road, whether you go with Jesus or you go alone. I'd rather go through the tough stuff with him. Myself. And... Um, so, I guess that should have answered the question. I don't know. Are there any other questions about this that I need to uh, address before the Lord calls me home? And he's not calling me home anytime soon that I know of. But I'm saying, before I leave this planet, I want y'all to know what I think about Jesus. And, um, and I do believe he was born of a virgin. I believe he lived a perfect life. I don't believe he ever sassed his mother. I don't believe he ever sinned. I believe he could have sinned, but he didn't. See, I asked my mother one time, I said, do you believe Jesus could have sinned? Uh, do you believe, you know, because the, the Bible says he was tempted like us yet without sin. And my mother said, well, uh, you, if you tempt me with a beer, like Satan tempting Jesus in, in those 40 days of temptation, mama said, it'd be like Satan offering me a beer. He's tempting me but I'm not tempted. I said, well, mama, what good is that? I don't need strength to help me when I'm not really tempted. Who needs a savior for that? I need a savior who when everything within me, hold on, let me turn on my automatic focus. When everything within me wants to do it, he gives me the strength not to. Um, and sometimes I do it anyway, because I'm a sinner. But then I have to ask forgiveness because I get convicted, you know, just like you. But I believe with all my heart that um, it's just rhetorical questions. That's what I was doing, really. Like, it's like, oh, can you believe who is in your lap? Can you believe that God is nursing at your breast? That you are changing God's diapers? It's the wonder of it that compressed and compacted in that eight-pound bundle on that first Christmas morning was the fullness of the Godhead. All the God in the universe was compressed into that eight-pound bundle that first Christmas morning because 
He wanted to be where we are. And He wanted to save us. And He had to become one of us to be the perfect Lamb of God that would take away the sin of the world, which He was before the foundation of the world. But He could not do that without taking on flesh. And by one man, Adam, all fell. And then by one man, the Lord Jesus, all are redeemed. The only way to be redeemed is through the Lord Jesus. So listen, on this Christmas, don't miss an opportunity to know the baby, to know the Savior. He wants to be your friend. He, if you've heard he's mad at you, if you've heard from some people on TV, maybe TV preachers who kind of scare you because they scream all the time, He's not like that. You know, it'd be like, here's what it's like. Okay, I'm at your house, and you ask me to go out and tell the kids to come in for dinner. Well, I go out and say, all right, you kids, get in the house for dinner. Okay, well, the message is true, but the tone of the voice is a little off. You didn't say it like that. You said, go tell the kids. So I think a lot of what our those that have gone before us, who've screamed at us, have told us, is true, but the tone of the voice of the Savior is so much kinder. It's the voice of a perfect father, a sinless father, who only has your best interest at heart. He is got the hound of heaven, the Holy Spirit, on your trail. And that may be why you tuned into this video. I'm here to tell you, God is crazy about you. Don't believe the lies that he's mad at you. He has come to redeem you. And all you gotta do, you know your participation in salvation is two words. Yes and thanks. Receive it, it's a free gift, and then spend the rest of your life being grateful. Merry Christmas, everybody. And I don't know if she knew or not, but I do know this. She knew he was virgin born. She didn't. See, we got to take that by faith. But oh, Mary, bless her heart, blessed mother of the Lord Jesus. She could remember the angel. She knew he was virgin born.